Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. So as you can see here on the preview window, we're back with the ISS to Station 5 transfer uh, mission that Dimitri set up. Had a lot of fun flying this one the first time. So I wanted to revisit it and try to do this again, but choose a different plan. So if you haven't seen uh, the previous series, it would uh, be a good idea to go back and watch that series first because this is going to be a repeat of that series, but we're going to do things a bit different. But just as a quick recap, let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And let's uh, take a look at some of the things that we were deciding on in the, the first time we flew this plan. So just a quick recap, I, I came up with like five or, uh, I think it was about five plans in that video when we suggested some other ideas. But the first plan that we looked at was plan number one where, and again, in each plan we have the same DV budget, you know, that's not going to change. But it's just the approach that we're taking to do the rendezvous that can change. And according to plan one, the idea was to undock from the ISS and just do an immediate plane change, which would uh, we calculated would cost 8,423 meters per second. Once we did the plane change, we would then uh, raise our orbit out to 2,000 kilometers to meet up with the uh, to meet up with the station five, and and we saw that you know by taking that approach we would have we wouldn't have enough delta v to do it. That would we'd be in the hole by negative 101.73. I should have mentioned in that um, I should have mentioned in that video that there's actually a variation of plan one that we can do that would potentially allow us to succeed it would still be very tight but a, a slight variation on plan one would be to undock from the ISS we would raise one side of our orbit out to 2,000 kilometers so we would basically be doing this maneuver and then we would combine the plane change and raising our PEA into one maneuver and if we if you do that you will have, in theory at least, you will have enough delta V to complete the mission, but it's really, really tight. And I definitely want to revisit that idea, but that's not what we're going to do here. We also talked about plan two, which had us, um, let's see, going the wrong way. So we also talked about plan two, which uh, instead of doing a plane change, and then raising our orbit, we would first raise our orbit way out, do a plane change, and then finish raising our orbit the rest of the way. Still a very expensive plan, but we would have a, uh, a delta V of uh, 730, you know, about 730 left over. And there's also variations of this plan that we could fly, but this is essentially the idea. We also talked about plan three, and this is the one that we actually ended up doing. And this is where we raise one side of our orbit way out to 100,000 kilometers, and then we go out to apoapsis, and we, and we time it so that our apoapsis and node line up, and then we go way out to apoapsis, do our plane change, and then while we're at apoapsis, we raise one side of our orbit out to 2,000 kilometers, and then we come back down and uh, complete the mission, essentially. And we calculated that if we did that, we would have about uh, 2,958 meters per second left over to do any additional maneuvering that we needed to do. And we flew that plan and our numbers were really bang on. We were within, I think by the time we finished the mission, we were within 10 meters per second of the calculation. So that worked out really well. And then just before docking, just moments before docking, we had 2,850 meters per second worth of Delta V left over. And we also talked about plan four, which was exactly the same thing as plan three, but instead of uh, using the powerful main engines back at Earth to bring down our apoapsis, we would instead use Earth's atmosphere. And that, uh, out of all the plans, that was the best one um, in terms of delta V usage. Uh, one possible issue, well, one definite issue with this plan is that once you bring your plane alignment down to 0, 0.0, you know, when you do your plane change, and then you come down to the atmosphere and you're using the atmosphere to do your break, it's going to be impossible, really. It's going to be impossible to keep your plane at 0.0. .0. So you're going to, you know, you're going to have to take that into consideration 
that uh, you know as you're using the atmosphere as a brake, you know it's going to be messing with your plane alignment. So if the, and if that highly disrupts your plane alignment, then then this maneuver, um, you know, you'd basically want to start over. So so we didn't do that, but that we talked about it. And we also talked about this idea of Plan 5, and this is the one I want to visit in this video. Uh, a while back, um, I don't know when this video is going to get uploaded, I'm recording it on July 3rd, but my current upload is super full for a long time, so who knows when you guys will see this video. But as of the time of this recording of July 3rd, I think it was around a month ago that I recorded this ISS to Mir flight, where I, I dropped down to the atmosphere use the atmosphere to get some plane alignment and at the time that I recorded that video I had been away from orbiter for six years and I didn't do that very well at all but I just wanted to demonstrate the idea so we're going to I'm going to revisit that in this flight but I'm going to try to do it correctly or at least as I'm going to try to execute it as well as I can so what we're going to do is we're going to lower our periapsis down to 75 kilometers and that's going to cost 86.99 according to our calculator where we're starting with this PEA, this APA, and this is our target. And it's going to cost somewhere between, you know, 83 meters and 87 meters per second. That's going to be, it probably won't be exactly uh, 86.99 because it's going to depend, could be, because I'm not going to be at my periapsis when I do the burn and I'm not going to be at my apoapsis when I do the burn. I'm going to do the burn so that I can time it with the uh, with the node but it's going to be somewhere between 83 meters and 87 meters per second that's what that's going to cost i just put in 86.99 as the high number for the placeholder and that's really all the calculating i can do um i because I, I just i simply don't know how much it's going to cost to to uh you know because as i'm going through the atmosphere and i'm getting that plane alignment correction i'm going to have to you know burn the main engines to bring my orbit back up I still believe this is going to be the cheapest maneuver overall, but that's kind of what I want to find out. So I just put these in as placeholders. So after, because we're probably going to have to do at least two or three, maybe even four passes through the atmosphere to get our plane alignment down where we want. So what I'm going to do is after I, you know, lower down to 75 kilometers and I'm going to pass through the atmosphere and then we're going to have to raise back out. I'm going to put in whatever DV I have remaining at that point, and then we'll be able to calculate what that maneuver cost. And then we'll do that again two, three, possibly four times. So it's going to take a while because, you know, these atmos anytime you're in the atmosphere, you know, you're pretty limited on what you can do with time warp. Once we get our plane down to, you know, mm, I don't know exactly, but I would say, you know, preferably as low as possible. But, you know, if we're if we're coming out of the last pass and we're at like two degrees out or something like that it's not going to be worth uh going through an entire another pass at that point we're just going to use we're just going to do a regular plane alignment but hopefully we can get our plane alignment like under one degree using the atmosphere that would be ideal um so so after our after each pass i'm going to put in whatever dv we have remaining and then we'll figure out you know what we what dv we spent to do those individual maneuvers and then we're going to have to raise our orbit out and, uh, you know, don't know exactly how I'm going to go about that, but at the moment I just put in as a placeholder that will raise it out to, you know, 1,900 kilometers, and then we'll plan our rendezvous from there. But again, this, this part of the plan uh, might vary a little bit from what I actually have in here. So with all that said, it's a bit of a long introduction, very long introduction, sorry about that, but I just wanted to kind of go over what it is that we're going to be doing in this video. So with all that said, let me go ahead and switch camera views here and let's jump into it. So let's get inside the XR Ravenstar. Let's power up our MFDs so we can see, you know, where we're at. And, you know, just like in the first time that we did this, you know, this is the same, the same mission file. So we're starting out at 358.1 on our PEA, 371.6 on our APA. Now I'm going to target station five. You can see it's at 2000 kilometers. And I'm going to bring up a line plane on the side, target station 5. And you can see, you know, it's 66.31 degrees, or 66.31 degrees out of plane with it. Exact same scenario as last time. So let's go ahead and get underway. We're not going to get too far into this before we'll have to go into the next video, but we can at least get things started. 
So I'm going to um, I'm going to undock. Undocking confirmed. Turn on the APU. Okay. And go ahead and uh, I probably am far enough away now that I can go ahead and close the nose cone. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. A little bit of time work just to speed up that animation. A little bit more time warp and control A to turn that off. All right, so we are going to plan on going over to the descending node at this point because we're far enough past the ascending node that we can't do anything. Because if we make a change now, it's going to affect that point, not that point. So we're just going to warp time forward, go over to the descending node, and we're going to bring down this side of our orbit. But I'm going to use interplanetary MFD to help us do that maybe a bit better than we could if we're looking just at a line plane. Although I don't know that it would really make a difference, but we're going to go ahead and use interplanetary MFD. So I'm going to go to the delta velocity program just like we did in the last mission. I'm going to quickly change the projection. And I know that, uh, well, first of all, let me target station five. And I know that I'm going to do this burn over here, so I'm going to adjust my time. And we're going to put in a bit more. That's too much. So let me go down to a 10. And we're going to adjust our time forward until we get over to about right there. And then I'm going to go down to a 1 adjustment and bump that forward just a little bit more. So this is the moment in time that I want to do the maneuver so that it affects that side of my orbit, which will be my ascending node. And what I want to do is I want to bring my my PEA down to 75 kilometers. And it should cost about somewhere between 83 and 87, according to our calculation. So I can just immediately set a number of negative 83. And we can see uh, that it, that shows us at 70 kilometers. So that gives us a, that gives us a good starting point. So now I'm going to go ahead and warp time forward because this is going to continue to change until I'm really close to that point. So I'm not going to bother fine tuning my delta V until I'm just about ready to do the burn. And we're about 500 seconds out. Okay, and we also know this is going to be a retrograde burn. So since we're trying to be efficient, Rotation. let's go ahead and start getting the vessel into position. And We'll probably get a little bit closer before we dial in the last bit of our DV, but, but I can tell it's probably going to be a little bit more than that. So I'm going to continue to take out DV because this is going to be a negative burn until we're closer to 75. And it looks like that number's tending to go up. So I'm going to set it for about there for now. All right, let's go ahead and warp time forward. We're still 400 seconds away from the burn. And... Continue warping time forward. Actually, I think I might have messed up my rotation. Let me see here. Let me bring up the burn vector. It'll be a little bit easier to see where I have to go. Yeah, I think I passed it over. So that's okay. We were being a bit we're being a bit efficient with the, the maneuver, so we didn't spend too much extra fuel there. Okay, so uh, we're 200 seconds away from the burn, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit auto burn and give the autopilot just a little bit of help to get closer to getting that where it needs to be. But now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the burn vector because I want to keep an eye on that. Uh, again, I'm, I'm shooting for 75 kilometers. It doesn't have to be perfect. If it's a little bit higher than 75, that's fine. If it's a little bit lower, but you know, 75 is my target. So we're at that 180 second point, so the, uh, the autopilot put us in position. So let me just warp time forward to get really close to that point. When we're maybe 30 seconds out, I'm going to look at that number again and just see if I want to make any adjustments. So we're about 45, so about right here. So back to real time. And now that's, uh, that's a bit lower than what I said. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn off, or rather switch pages. And I'm just going to put in a little bit more DV just to make sure that we're closer to the target. So that number seems to be counting down a little bit, so I'm just going to overshoot a little bit. That way, by the time we actually get there, it'll be really close to what we actually wanted. 
All right, here comes the burn in just uh, about five seconds. And burning. Okay, and that burn is now complete. So what I'm curious to see, let me bring up burn time calculator and let me put in the RCS. So we started out with 9111 and we're at now at 9027. So we're now at 9027. So I'm going to switch over here because I just kind of, I'm a little curious to log my results. So we have C59 minus 9027. So we estimated a cost of about, you know, somewhere between 80, let me look again, somewhere between 83 and 87. And our actual cost was 84, which was right there where we calculated that it should be. So that's nice to see. Go ahead and switch camera views here. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, warp time forward till we get over to the ascending node. So let me go ahead and get that started. And we know that we're going to be in the prograde position Translation, rotation. when we get there. So let me start getting my vessel like in the position that I want to be in by the time I get over there. So we're going to be in prograde and we also want the vessel to be uh, wings level such that, um, let me actually get in position then I'll show you what I mean. Overshot that a little bit, but that's okay. So we want to be wings level, let me get just a little bit more here, in this direction. Because since we are wanting to burn, or since we're wanting to bring our plane, you know, closer to zero in the anti-normal mode, we I want my vessel to be level so that I'm pulling up towards, you know, these negative numbers essentially. And that's the position that I want to be in when I actually get over here. Now, there's, a, there's, a, there's an ideal angle of attack that you want to be in when you're doing these atmospheric uh, <clears throat> surfing maneuvers. And that angle of attack is 15 degrees, exactly. 15.0000, you know, that kind of thing. If you're at 13 degrees, you'll do well, but you won't do as well as you would if you were at 15 degrees. If you're at 14 degrees, you'll do even better than you did at 13, but not as well as 15. And likewise, if you go beyond 15 degrees to where you're at 16, 17, 18, you'll do well, but you won't do as well as 15. 15 is perfect, it's ideal. And we will actually demonstrate that. But since I know that's the case, I'm going to start getting my vessel trimmed out for, for atmospheric flight so the first thing I'm going to do is give myself full up elevator, which I actually will have to turn on the APU. So let me just power up the APU. And I'm having a little bit of a difficult time getting that adjusted how I want. So currently my elevons haven't changed at all. So I'm going to uh, click here and then re-click here and hopefully that will get them in position yeah yeah i think i can just barely see see that they have adjusted i'm really struggling with that camera angle but it, at any rate we'll we want i want full up elevator because that's going to get me around i think around 10 degrees of aoa to get the extra few degrees of aoa that i want i'm going to use center of gravity shift so let me go ahead and and I know that it's going to be a really small amount and if I click here or here it adjusts by quite a bit so I'm just going to recenter that and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut which it's see it's alt it's either alt or control I can't ever remember which but I think it's alt yeah so if I hit alt comma that gives me a little back a little bit of backwards center of gravity shift alt comma goes backwards and alt period goes forwards so I'm going to center that out, and I'm going to put in a little bit of, and I know just experimentally that I think that's pretty close to what I want right there is negative uh, 0 0.0379. Now I'm going to turn the APU back off, 
actually one more thing. Let me make sure pitch. that I have pitch control on and maybe now the elevators, elevons will adjust. I'll, I'll get them adjusted. But for now I'm going to go ahead and turn the APU back off. But that's basically the configuration that I'm going to want this vessel to be in. We're at 20 minutes on this video so let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And when we come back we're going to go ahead and uh, warp time forward the rest of the way and do our first pass of the atmosphere um, plane alignment maneuver. So I hope you like what we're doing here. Um, let me know how, let me leave a comment down below uh, with your predictions on how all of this is going to go. Do you think this is going to be cheaper than what we did in our other plan? Or do you think this will be more expensive than plan uh, four, the one that we didn't actually fly? Leave your predictions down below and I will see you in the next video.